Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Extremely exciting at the moment in the world of DCS with the FA18C. We now have access, first access to the Harpoon, the AGM-84D. Now, I've recently been doing a whole bunch of videos regarding the ships, combined arms, controllable ships in DCS, and the ultimate weapon for taking down the ships, it turns out, in ship-to-ship -ship warfare is the Harpoon missiles. Now, we've got an air launch version. So the role play for today is we've got a little island here. You can make up the name of the island. We have a small outpost there and they've spotted Peter the Great, the arch nemesis naval vessel here, big battle cruiser. Now this is only a rough marker for it. All we know is that it's to the northeast roughly and it's between 10 and 15 miles. That's all we know at the moment. So we've been called in now to go and drop a harpoon and try and take it out. So let's get our F-18 and jump in the action. Okay, so in we go. Right, so already on course for the island. First of all, let's get our basic stuff set up so we can concentrate on setting up the weapon, our barometric hold on. We're going to get our automatic throttle on, pressing the tango key. And we're ready to go. So into our stores page. We're going to select our harpoon. We can carry four of them on the usual pylons. Note that it has a alignment period of 25 seconds, so we have to wait for that before we launch it. Master arm on, air to ground on. Harpoon is a large anti-ship missile, 500 pound warhead, up to about 70 miles, WAG says. 70 nautical miles for range. Range depends on how you use it, like a lot of weapons, with over the horizon ability. So there are two ways we can use the harpoon. One is BOL under launch mode here. BOL is bearing only launch, means we only have the bearing. That's something we can use at the moment. The second type is range bearing launch. Now that uses the air to ground radar, which we don't have yet. So at the time of making this video, August 2019, it's bearing only launch. We would usually change the modes with that there. Next is the flight profile. At what altitude do we want this missile to cruise? So before it goes terminal, we can change medium, high or low. Low is 5,000 feet, 15,000 feet and high 35,000 feet. We're going to go low because it looks cooler. The higher the missile cruises, the further it can go, but the more interceptable it is. Next is terminal mode. We have the option of skim or pop up. Skim means that when we've gone terminal, which is the point at which it has found a target and is attacking the target and is skimming low along the sea, skim will take it into the side of the ship at about 25 feet. ASL pop up means that five miles from the target it will pop up up to about 500 feet and dive down onto the target from the top. Now the reason we're going to do that is that most warships are, have armoured side hulls and there's a good chance that we'll have little effect attacking a hull from the side that's armoured but warships are much more susceptible to damage on the superstructures or the deck itself above the side hull. So we can choose skim or pop up. I'm just going to leave it on skim for this just to prove a point. And you can see that we're currently populating program one. We can have several programs for this selected missile we've got here. And you can see we can change through it with the program there. So back to program one, which we're populating at the moment. We can step between the four missiles we've got with this guy here. We'll just stick with this station here, which we're populating at the moment. Next, we need to populate the search, the destruction, and the bearing. So, if we go to UFC here, the search is the distance at which it's got on bearing to which it turns on its sensors and starts looking for the ships. So, in this case, it's going to get on bearing at this island here. That's our only reference to where that ship is. Is. So what we're going to do is say once it's got to that island and it's starting to head on bearing, we're going to send it out on that bearing there. We'll give it just say two miles. Two miles should do once it's got on that bearing to be able to pick up that ship. So sorry, we need to do that again. Search two miles after getting on bearing. Enter. We're going to turn on our sensors. Destruction range is at which point once it's begun, once it's got this bearing, do you want it to self-destruct so that it doesn't accidentally go and take out further shipping? Well, we've talked about the range of Peter the Great from our island. So what we can say is after 20 miles, if you haven't found or hit the ship, then self-destruct. Next is the actual bearing. And again, we want to go northeast from the island. So that is going to be 045. So bearing, I'm just going to type in 45 there. 
So, the search range from getting on bearing 2 miles, it just self-destructs after 20 miles, and it's going to go out on an active bearing of 045, and search on that bearing for ships. Next, we'd like to go and have a look in our HSI. We've got our A and PCD down here. If we just zoom in a little bit, what we can see is that is us there, and this here is an indication of the path of our harpoon as we've set up. So it's travelling out from us at 045 degrees. After two miles, this figure here shows it will turn on its search and begin searching. This is the 20 miles self-destruct here. And so as it stands, it's going to search from there, travelling travel along here until we get to self-destruct point. What we can do is ask it to centre its search around a midway between this point and this point here by boxing fixed point here. If we did that, we are now asking the harpoon to search between that point and that point, which is that midpoint there, for a predicted point of the convoy. And we just don't have enough accurate information for that, so we're not going to do the fixed point. What we are going to do, because at the moment this is coming out from 40, bearing 45 from us, that's completely useless. We need it to come out from 45 degrees from our island. Now that doesn't show on here, but it's going to be about here. Luckily we do have a waypoint on that island, so what we're going to do is ask the harpoon to first travel to our waypoint 1 and then get on bearing at 045 and hunt for the ship, which is just how we've got the mission set up. So what we're going to do is go over to our HSI and sorry, we're going to select our waypoint 1, which is on that island. Uh, we are going to press harpoon turn point. What that's now done is, if we zoom out, is the harpoon will now travel to waypoint 1, which I had selected, and then get on bearing 045 and do its search. The harpoon will travel to waypoint 1 there, then go 0545 out to search for the target. So that is the use of that feature. So that's it, our harpoon is all set up and ready to fire. Uh, miscellaneous features here, we can tell that we've got our harpoon turn point selected here, we can tell the same thing there, we can tell we've got our harpoon selected there, and we're bearing only launch there. We're going to send the missile out. That's one times bruiser, weapon release to fire. Off she goes. Let's go and follow her. Just make sure we've got autopilot on still. And we have. So first thing she's going to do is get to her designated cruise altitude of 5,000 ASL that we gave it. It's going to travel around 500 knots. And we'll speed it up. So it's on its first leg to waypoint one. I can see Peter the Great there, look. Zoom in, you can see it. About 12 miles off the island, I put him. It's going to hit waypoint 1. It's going to make the right turn to bearing 045. Off she goes. After two miles, it's going to turn its sensors on and start searching for the ship and hopefully find it. It's broadside. Should be easy to see. now found the target it's, and because it's found the target it's going into terminal mode so it's going to go down to below 50 feet and the beauty of that is it's too low for that ship to find it with its radar that ship will not be able to shoot this harpoon down or actually saying that I think Peter the Great actually can shoot uh, missiles this low down I have stopped it firing back just on this occasion but the vast majority of ships we found simply can't shoot harpoons down So we're below 50 feet now, so there's not many ships, uh, military ships out there that can take this down now. At least in DCS we found. We're going all the way down now to, oh look at that, 4 feet. Well that was a bit low. And we should hit it from the side. Pretty much impossible to attack now because we're so low. Boom, thump. And notice we only did 1% damage, so we've got a uh, reinforced hull here along the side. So it's very hard to do any damage with the harpoon down here. And that showed the, the use of doing the pop-up attack, where we can go up 500 feet, slam down, hit the superstructure. And we can do a lot more damage, take out radars, take out weapons and stuff like that. Although that took a long time, in reality, if you're not, you're not talking, you can actually set it up in about 30 seconds, fire another. Set another one up from scratch in 30 seconds, fire that one and so on. Go out and enjoy your harpoons and we'll update this when Edie have put the, uh, the, the range mode in.